Hey everyone, it's Christina, and today I have a mini book review for you on The Hollow People by Brian Keeney, and I have a book haul for you, so let's begin. Um, the Hollow People was published in Great Britain in 2006, and it was published in the United States in 2007. It is a YA fiction, and it is 224 pages long. Um, let, first, let's start off with the title. The title is The Hollow People, obviously. And the book, when I saw it in the library, it appealed to me because the cover looks kind of creepy, dark, dismal type of thing. Um, the writing on the title, if you can't see that, I'll show it to you, um, and the rest of the cover, it just appealed to me. It looks sketchy. It looks um, almost, um, I don't know, haunting. It, it it just it appealed to me, and the cover actually, the cover and the title actually describes the entire story. Whereas some YA books don't do that; they just have um, a title and it has nothing to do with the story. But this title does. Okay, I will read the inside cover for you real quick because I want I really want to get to my book haul and I really just want to give you my thoughts on this book and the overall plot. I will skip the excerpt right up here because um, it, it just, I don't know, I'll just describe the story. In Tarnagar, a sinister island where the laws of the mysterious Dr. Sigmundus hold sway, dreaming will get you locked up, branded a lunatic, and a danger to all who know you. Dante is a lowly kitchen boy. B is a privileged daughter of physicians. They aren't meant to meet or share ideas, or most dangerous of all, their dreams. But with the but with the arrival of a notorious prisoner to the island's asylum, their worlds collide. Together they begin to question whether the promises they base their lives on have been spun from lies and illusion, and if now is the time to break them. The Hollow People opens a window on the unseen worlds that surround us. It is the first installment in the promises of Dr. Sigmundus. Alright, um, I'm sorry if I read really fast. I just don't want this video to be really long. Most of my reviews will not be that... Um, rushed. Um, I do have a review on Goodreads of this, so if you want to check that out, um, you can. I'll leave a link below. But the main plot is about these two kids, Dante and B. Dante is the kitchen boy in the asylum, and B is a privileged daughter of physicians who goes to this prestigious school, and she is going to go through this coming of age ceremony that initiates you into society. It's kind of like getting your license, but a more extreme. Because in the coming of age ceremony, uh, you're given this drug called i -Cor. I'm not sure if that's how you say it, but that's how I'm going to say it. Um, and i -Cor is a drug that basically um, takes away your ability to dream. Uh, it, takes away to, it takes away your ability to um, to think for yourself, basically, and and in doing so, uh, makes you hollow, hence the title. Um, so she's going to go through the ceremony, and she's not sure if she wants to go through it. She's still trying to find out who she is as a person and where she fits into, into society. Dante is also like that. Um, he has gone through a tragedy, and he's trying to rearrange his life. He's going through the phases. Um, People of higher status treat him as if he was dirt. They really don't treat him as a person. And he's also trying to find himself in society as well. The next character that I want to discuss is Dr. Sigmundus himself, which is the whole ringleader of this plot. He's the one who introduced the drug i to to um, society in order to control them. And... He's basically Mr. Evil in this story. I would consider this story a dystopian because the government controls everything that you do. You know, it's one of those, you abide by these rules. If you don't, something bad will happen. Everyone is on the same page, basically. No one's supposed to go out of boundaries. They're basically being controlled by this drug or by this dictator, Dr. Sigmundus. The setting is set in this asylum, which I thought was a good, was a pretty good 
um, setting for for a book because I've never seen it in a book before and that's why I think this book is sort of unique in a sense because you know where have you read a book that an asylum is the main plot there are probably books out there who do have that plot but this is the first one I've read with that plot anyway so those are the main characters I guess that I'll discuss there are some other characters like B's mother and father B's mother submissive to the government anything the government says she agrees with um, her father is a she, he works at the asylum and he thinks that anything can be explained he's a very logical and scientific person and they're basically shoving um, this coming of age ceremony down B's throat and she's kind of trying to deal with that her father, on the other hand, is very sympathetic. B and her father's relationship reminded me of Atticus Finch in Scouts and To Kill a Mockingbird because it was so um, nurturing and understanding. Um, and I say that, and I think that B is a mirror image of her father, and she actually does sort of word it that way in the book. So I thought that was a very cool aspect. Um, the characters were developed very well. The plot is very steady and slow at some points. And I think Brian Keeney did that to allow the characters to uh, develop and allow the reader to connect with them or have a chance to connect with them. Whereas in some other YA books, you're immediately introduced to the characters, you're given the basics, and you don't really connect with them immediately. But with this book, I had a chance to connect with the main characters, and I definitely felt sympathy for them throughout the book. There were a couple points where I didn't feel sympathy, and I kind of felt in and out of the book, but, you know, what can you do? Okay, uh, there are a lot of parallels between the characters. What I mean by that is most of them are connected to each other in some way, so... There are a lot of connections and connecting the dots between characters, which I thought was pretty cool. The book actually deals with the concept of dreams and um, mind control and manipulation, censorship, and also freedom and how uh, and how you take control of your own life type of thing. So that was a good thing about the book that I actually liked. Some things I didn't like about the book. One was that um, some points you really connected with one character and then after they share their story or after they're introduced, they're kind of pushed into the background. You never really hear of, you never really hear from them again in the book and I thought that kind of felt unresolved to me and it didn't go full circle. Another point is that I kind of felt the book was sort of middle grade, but I kind of did, but I expected that sort of when I picked it up. But nevertheless, it was a pretty good book. I rated it a 3 out of 5, which is, um, it was an okay book. Uh, I liked a couple of things about it, but that was about it. I wouldn't immediately recommend it, but if you want to read it, you know, by all means. But, um, it's, you know, one of those iffy books. So that is my review on The Hollow People by Brian Keeney. On to the book haul. Um, today I went to Barnes & Noble, the best place in the world, by the way. Um, I don't go there often, which is sad. I wish I lived closer to it, but, you know. Alright, so on to the book haul. The first book I got um, is a very... Well, not a very well-known book, but it's one that's been going around the book community type of thing. And I got Divergent by Veronica Roth. I've heard a lot of good things about this book, a lot of mixed reviews on it. Um, mostly good, though. It is in the dystopian genre, and that's one of my favorite genres that I like to read. I don't like reading dystopian genres back-to-back just because sometimes it gets a little tiresome. What I gather from the story is that this girl named Beatrice or Triss um, has a choice 
or is given a choice on um is given a choice when she turns 16 I think or a certain age yeah 16 um so when you turn 16 in the society you have to choose what faction you're going to belong to for the rest of your life and um she chooses this one faction and it's basically her um experience trying to adjust to this new faction because she was in a faction that was completely different so she has to change her entire personality I guess and become someone else so I'm looking forward to reading this book the next book I got was a book that I've wanted for a pretty long time um, when I first saw it online I was kind of skeptical about it because the plot line seemed a bit um, predictable. Not the plotline itself, but like the characters kind of seem predictable. So it's kind of iffy. But something swayed me as I started to watch reviews on it and people said it was amazing. And the fact that Edgar Allan Poe is in it is awesome. So I got Nevermore by Kelly Cray. I'm so excited to read this. Um, Edgar Allan Poe is one of my favorite poets slash authors. He is just amazing. I love his writing. He's just awesome sauce. <laughs> okay, so about this book, um, it's about this girl named Isabel who's a typical cheerleader, um, and she is paired up with this guy named Baron, and they choose an English class, I think? Yeah. They're they are paired up together in English class to do this English project and they decide to do it on Edgar Allan Poe and apparently Varen uh, keeps this journal where he writes Edgar Allan Poe-ish type things and he has this dream world that he's created so and Isabel is sucked into it kinda so I'm very, very, very excited to read this book. I actually wanted to get it in hardcover, but I saw it at Barnes & Noble and I had to grab it, um, even though it's in paperback, but you know, what can you do? So Nevermore by Kelly Cray. So the last book that I got at Barnes & Noble was a book that um, grabbed me from the start. The cover immediately drew me in, and there's just something about it that made me want to get it. And I just, I, when I saw it at Barnes & Noble, I just had to pick it up. I think it was the last copy. And a lot of people have been saying a lot of good things about this book. They said that it's their favorite. So I got Jellica Road by Melina Marchetta. Um, this book just looks awesome. The cover just appealed to me immediately. I love it. I think it's going to be one of my favorite covers. Um, it's just, it, it just looks like it's going to be good. You know, when you see a book and you just feel and know that it's going to be good, I think this book is going to be good. Um, what I gathered from it was this girl named Taylor is abandoned by her mother and she's taken to this boarding school where she becomes this leader, I suppose, in this underground community. And her friend Hannah is, she just disappears, I guess, and she's trying to solve the mystery of where she is and it leads to more questions and answers and she's trying to find the answers and I'm just excited to read this book. Um, when I opened the, the first page I was immediately drawn in. I was hooked and I, I really don't want to read it right now because I'm actually waiting for these two other books. Um, the Taking by Dean Koontz and The Poet by Michael Connolly. So I am very excited to read this book. Alright, that's it. I know this video is very long. Um, all my videos will not be like this. It won't be as rushed, but my video, uh, but my camera was dying, so I had to rush, and yeah. And I'm sorry if it was way too fast. I'm, I'm normally not like that. I just wanted to get it done. Um, I do a review on Goodreads if you want to read it on the Hollow People, and I suppose that's it. All my book reviews will not be like this. 
most of them. As I go along, my group, my book reviews will be more uh, sophisticated and um, more in depth uh, than the one I just gave. Um, other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video, despite all its craziness and speed. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for more book reviews and book-related videos.